All right, time for section 5.2, the law of cosines. So here we are going to be get looking at case three and case four from our previous videos when we're looking at side angle side and side 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 relationships. And the first thing we want to discuss is this statement right here, which I have edited because I believe this statement to be more true than the original, which says, in any triangle, the sum of the lengths of any two sides must be greater than the length of the remaining side. <clears throat> well, this really pertains to looking at adding the two shortest sides. If the sum of the two shortest sides, it has to be greater than the largest side in order for a triangle to be formed. It doesn't make sense to take the largest side and add it to one of the others. Yeah, it's going to be greater than the third side because it's already the largest side. So the smarter statement is to say the sum of the two shortest sides must be greater than the largest side in order to form a triangle. <clears throat> so side of A, which is 3, side B, which is 4, side C, which is 10, you need to get 3 and 4 to have more length to it. So it's got to go over 10. So they, these two sides can meet somewhere above the base of the triangle. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is creating the law of cosines. <clears throat> so just like we had in our ambiguous cases, you got to worry about when there's no triangle, and then we have to worry about finding other parts and solving our triangle. So in my diagram here, angle A, side B, and side C, they are given. I cannot use the law of sines here. I do not know the side opposite of angle A. I do not know the value of angle C, and I don't know the value of angle B, so I can't use the law of sines. I have no ratio that's complete. So in this diagram, if I want to use the law of sines, I'm definitely going to need to know this side A that's opposite of this given angle A. That's why I put this in red. We have to find that distance. So what I did is I took this triangle and I put it on the coordinate plane, my x, y axis. We need to find this distance. So if we put angle A right at the origin and side C or segment AB right on the x axis, then we know the coordinates of point B. It is C comma zero. Then if we want to find out where is the location of point C on our xy coordinate plane, then we know we have to go x units to the right and straight up y units. So, hey, we form a right triangle here inside of triangle ABC. Very similar to what we did earlier in the previous videos when we were finding <coughs> the law of sines. We needed to know the height of our triangles, especially with that area formula as well. So when we want to create the law of cosines, what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with a formula that has just these three given pieces of information in it. Well, to find A, the distance between these two points, I'm going to use that formula. A is equal to the square root of the difference of the x's squared plus the difference of the y squared. You might recall, whoops, come back here, x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared, plus the binomial y minus 2 minus y1 squared. So subtract your x's, subtract your y's. Well, I don't want the square root, so we're going to square both sides. And I don't want the parentheses, because I want to do a substitution. I want to work angle A, side B, and side C into my formula. So if I want to do substitutions, i got to get rid of these parentheses. So this binomial, we're going to FOIL that out, and we're going to get x squared minus 2cx plus c squared plus y squared. So what I need is I need to get rid of this x and those two spots and this y. So looking at this right triangle that xy built for me, I need some trig ratios using these sides. Well, we got to use angle A. That's given. So y is opposite of angle A over the hypotenuse. There's a sine ratio. Then c, 
All right. Well, no, no, not C. Check that X. Cosine A adjacent X over hypotenuse B. There's my two trig ratios using this right triangle right here. So everything's going to have angle A and side B. Ignore the fact I said C because C is already in my formula. So multiply the B's to the other side of the equation. And now we substitute them in. So all right, here's my B times cosine A. That goes in for the X being squared and multiply it to the 2C. B times sine of A, we'll put that over here and we, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Cosine squared, sine squared being added. I'm thinking Pythagorean theorem. Okay, I'm simplifying. I got it. You know what I need to do is I need to bring this B squared sine squared A. I need to move it over here. Okay, because as soon as I see a cosine squared and a sine squared being added together, I'm thinking that's going to be a 1. So if we, let's see, oh, here we go. If we were to factor out the B squared just from these two terms, not everybody, just those two terms, we'll end up with cosine squared A plus sine squared A. This is a 1. And 1 times b squared will be just b squared. <clears throat> and now we have found the distance of a, because we could just take the square root of both sides. And notice everything on the right, b, c, and cosine a, all the three parts that were given. This is called the law of cosines. So anytime you have a side-angle-side relationship, the angle is included. It's between the two sides that are given. You have the law of cosines. And because there's three angles, you're going to have three forms of this formula. So we had angle A, side B, side C. We'll have angle at B with side A, side C. We'll have angle C with side A, side B. So there's our first one. That's the one we created. Now, if I want to have cosine B over here, which means you have to have B squared over here, then all the B's are going to become A's, and this A becomes the B, and the angle A becomes the B. So angle A goes to angle B. All the B's here, the sides, became A's, and the A squared becomes the B squared. Well, we'll do the same thing. Well, we want angle C. That means B squared has to become C squared. So now where I see my C squareds or my C, they become Bs. And my C squared is over here and my angle B becomes C. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, this is the only one I memorized because look, this is really close to the Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Then just tack on a minus 2AB times the cosine of C, and you're in business. That's my law of cosines.